The World Health Organization declared MPOX a global health emergency earlier this week on the heels of outbreaks in at least 18 African countries. The WHO is warning the disease could spread across international borders, now confirming a case in Sweden has been linked to one of those outbreaks. Infectious diseases specialist with the University Health Network, Dr. Isaac Bogosh, joins us now for more insight. Good morning, Dr. Bogosh. Good to see you. Great to see you as well, Candace. So let's start with a refresher of sorts on MPOX. How's it contracted? Who's most at risk? And how can it be prevented? Yeah, this is a viral infection. It was originally endemic to parts of Central Africa and West Africa, but we had a big outbreak outside of uh, those areas in 2022 around the world. Most people can contract it through very close and prolonged contact with an infected individual with direct contact and sexual contact. Those are the primary modes of transmission. People can get pretty sick from this. Uh, people have a fever, they all have swollen lymph nodes, and then there's this classic rash that's very uh, painful, painful lesions all over the body. Um, and uh, most people recover, but there certainly have been some fatalities associated with this. Uh, we do have a vaccine that seems to be pretty effective in reducing the risk of infection. And if there is breakthrough infection, it significantly mitigates the severity of infection uh, in, in those who have been vaccinated versus those who have not. And we do have some treatments available that will help lessen uh, severe symptoms as well. So that's available in Canada. The big issue is rolling those vaccines and therapeutics out in areas that are hardest hit from this in Africa. For sure, and we definitely want to talk about that. But just uh, briefly, back to the WHO's declaration, how significant is that, and what does it say about this virus? Well, it's a big deal because this really has been spreading for a few years now uh, unchecked in, uh, in African settings, and it's the, the degree of the outbreak, which is largely in the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, is is so big that it's now spilling over into many other neighboring countries like Kenya, Rwanda, Burundi, Tanzania, Uganda. West Africa is having an outbreak as well. Ivory Coast, for example, is reporting cases. And now we're seeing more exported cases like the one that uh, was identified yesterday in Sweden. So we know it's a communi communi communicable infection. If you if you leave it unchecked, it's, it's going to spread. And by declaring this a global public health emergency, uh, of international significance, it really helps focus the world, coordinate resources, uh, enable data sharing, and and help facilitate a more coordinated response to this outbreak. Okay, and on the vaccine, uh, it is a regime of vaccines, if I'm correct. In other words, it requires uh, more than one dose, but uh, the WHO is appealing for doses of the vaccine from countries with surplus or stockpiles to be sent to those countries in Africa. So talk a little bit about the access in this part of the world to the vaccine. Yeah, that's really the tragic part of, of this, because we've known that this outbreak has been mushrooming for, for a while. And, you know, there certainly are regulatory hurdles and logistical hurdles to deploying vaccine. But I mean, come on, it's been years and we've seen very little in the way of large-scale vaccine mobilization in areas that are hardest hit that's it's really upsetting to watch because th there's significant morbidity associated with this infection and of course mortality as well we know the vaccines are very effective and we've seen that for example here in canada where we've deployed vaccines to the highest risk communities uh, with with very significant positive effects uh, and we can do better as a world to ensure that those are mobilized to the hardest hit settings currently in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Yes, so uh, we've uh, unfortunately had to learn that lesson the hard way uh, many times. But uh, back to this country here in Canada. Can you tell us what the latest numbers are here and what we're hearing from the Public Health Agency of Canada? Yeah, so currently the, the epidemic in Canada is very different than uh, in, in some other parts of the world, especially in Africa. And again, said with respect, with no moralization, with no stigmatization, but over 96% of the cases in Canada are in the men who have sex with men community. So appropriately so, the current public health approach is to focus on that community. And that's where the communication has been really targeting. That's where the vaccine outreach uh, has been targeting and a huge credit to the community leadership in the men who have sex with men community 
because they've really taken charge and have been on, on the front lines for ensuring safety of the community, outreach the community, putting vaccine clinics in uh, areas where uh, at-risk individuals, and that's namely men who have sex with men with multiple sexual partners, are, are more comfortable going to receive the vaccine. I think that's a very appropriate public health response. Listen, of course, if the epidemiology changes in Canada, the public health response can change. But currently, it's pretty focused on uh, men who have sex with men with multiple sexual partners and sex workers.